Hello and welcome to my watch reviews and that's exactly what I've got you another one of the watches out of my own personal collection and this one again is an iconic Seiko this is actually the world's first ever digital chronograph watch and that in today's terms means very very little but you've got to think this watch came out in 1975 1976 Back then, it was completely cutting edge technology. And as a result, certainly Seiko, who uh, brought this one to market, um, was selling this as a premium product. It was actually slightly more expensive than an Omega Speedmaster at the time. And I'll put a little advert up for you now to prove that. Um, but as a result, you would get a good quality watch. This is a great big lump of steel. It's got an angle to it. It's got an amazing bracelet as well. And yes, I guess that was to justify the price tag. Now it came in three versions. You've got this version, which was the top of the line. It's a 0634-5019. Um, then there was another one, which was 0634-5009. Again, I've got that one with box and papers for the original receipt as well, where it was bought in Hong Kong of all places. And then finally, there was a, a leather version of it, which was the 6340-5001. Sorry, I couldn't remember it for a moment there. And that had a slightly different bracelet and face on it. Also, I believe that one was a JDM, a, a Japanese domestic market watch. Uh, but I can't say that wholeheartedly. I just know that from memory, really. And fortunately for me, I own all three. Uh, collected these quite a few years ago, certainly when you could buy them reasonably cheap. Nowadays, you can't at all. And I've had to repair them to get them going. Uh, this video, of course, is concentrating on the iconic one because it's just such a treat. But it didn't always look like this uh, it came to me as always with a lot of my watches as a bit of a project i bought it from a friend called load knew i was after one and he sold it me for only 80 pounds which was incredible really given how much these are today but it needed a full restoration which is what i gave it so uh, I haven't got video footage of that because it was many years ago, but I'm going to do it all through the power of photography and show you my shots and how I managed to achieve all the different finishes and, of course, show you the end product for you to admire uh, or critique, depending on how you see that, because um, I'm going to be very interested to hear your feedback in the comments uh, once this video goes live. So stay tuned and let's show you some photographs and I'll explain how I restored it. This is the watch as it came to me and as you can see it looks okay but it's quite scratched and beaten up. The main thing is though it's working because quite often these are not working and they can be quite hard to fix. Now the case is a sandwich case and as a result the a lot of debris, a lot of dirt and a heck of a lot of DNA uh, stuck in between the case and the watch module itself. Uh, I think in years to come, you'll be able to put all that in a dish and create the human being that actually had that DNA to start with because there's vast amounts. Just look at it. It's horrible. It's the worst part of the job, really, is cleaning off other people's crap. So to get that screen off, it's got that steel surround, which is a giant spring and you have to lever it off and you can easily slip with the tool and damage it. So you have to be very, very careful. The module here looks very clean. Normally these are full of uh, battery leakage and gunk. Um, you can remove that bit off it. That's about all you can do. That's just held in the battery. That's the module with the screen off. They're the contacts. And then we go on to the screen. So these have got little C-clips or E-clips that you've got to get off to get those pushes out. Because of course you need to clean behind those as well. Because again, the pushers attract lots of dirt and debris behind them which makes them not work as efficiently as they should so there we go there's just some parts all laid out um, all stripped down and ready to go into the cleaner one thing i noticed on this one though 
is it's got a service mark on the case back, which is really, really unusual. Never seen that on a digital watch. Here I am examining the case before I start to refinish it, and it's got lots of different finishes. So the top here and around the sides is a nice brushing. Uh, the bottom lower part, the cutout part, is highly polished, or it would be highly polished normally. And then the really difficult part, really, is this bit here, the front slope, because that's a ground finish, that's a linear finish. It's not brushed or anything, that's machined. So it's hard to replicate, but I had an idea on how to do it. So I've started here with some wet and dry. First of all, got to cut through all of those scratches. Once I'm happy with it and I'm using fine grain paper, I will then brush finish it using some very um, uh, fine uh, scotch bright pads. These are the ones I use. I sell them in my business at work. Uh, these are from a company called Merca. The grey is ultra fine and the maroon is very fine. So you start getting a nice brushed finish using that stuff as a result. This is painstaking work though. It does take hours of scratching away and trying to get under the main deep scratches and then trying to get a brush finish that looks reasonably uh, authentic. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. So I've done those top side parts and I'm quite happy at this stage and it's on to trying to figure out how to do that front bit. So my method here was to use some 400 grit emery cloth on a steel back. I basically dragged that case across it very slowly and only in one direction and that is the result you get. You've got to be very careful because you can quite easily lose the corners at the bottom or equally at the top. That's why you do it in one direction. So here I am now, I'm just going to mask it all up with some Captain tape or heat proof tape because the top part has got to be highly polished along with those sides. And I'm just using a combination of um, polishing compounds and I'm using a Dremel type tool with some felt uh, bobs on the end of it. And of course you've got to keep on masking it all the time. This is just to do the brushing again. To When you polish it you sometimes slip so you then have to re-brush it again to get rid of the polishing marks. You can just see some there, hopefully. Um, it is a bit of trial and error. You've got to keep on doing it, but this was a labor of love for me. It's a watch that I wanted to own, probably my most iconic digital watch in my collection. So I had to put all my effort into getting this done. So there we go. You can now see the contrast between the two, the high polished and the brushed. And I was very happy at this stage. I believe I've kept the sharp edges as good as I can. The top there, I'm still impressed to this day. I think that's as good as anybody is going to get it, certainly by hand, that is, in a way. Perhaps on this side, maybe you can see that the edge is slightly gone. I don't know, but it is the compromise, and at least that bit you don't visibly see. Here we go, all sort of put back together again, and looking really, really good. Uh, as far as I'm concerned anyway. I can't help but keep showing you photos of of that top part because it, it was very hard to get right actually. It was quite scratched to start with. Um, so I was generally really impressed with the results. So I've got some before and after shots here as well so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I think it's very good. You might notice though that I forgot to do one thing and that is the pushers. And I still haven't done them to this day. I have uh, <laughs> wear this watch quite regularly and when I post it on my Facebook group, some smart eyed people on there will notice it and they say, why did you never do that? And to be honest, I don't know why, I just forgot. And it's such an easy thing compared to all the other work to get that right. So maybe, maybe soon, I'll re remove those pushes and just put them against the felt wheel with a bit of polish. They'll come up in five minutes flat for sure. Um, so there we go. Nice contrast between those two areas that I like the most. And especially that one because that was so, so difficult to do. So let's have a look at the watch outside in all of its glory as it is today. We're a good three years on from this restoration. And I think it's held up rather well. Clearly on this shot here, you can see <laughs> the lack of detail on those pushers, that's for certain. But look at it. It is 
it's just so 70s it looks like a television in a way it's really big and chunky it's completely different to its other models i do like those other two versions don't get me wrong but this one is definitely the best um, i like the way it's angled at the sides just gives it an enormous um, sense of presence when you're you're wearing it and it's just a digital watch i mean we think nowadays that digital watches are nothing all that special yet this like i said at the beginning of the video was the first of its kind this you could blame this uh for everything you could blame blame it for for almost for the quartz crisis you know what i mean digital watches came on everybody got involved in them bought them because they were the latest thing and as a result i'm sure mechanical watches suffered greatly you did see the likes of omega and other big brands actually making their own digital watches as a result so everybody got on the gravy train um, but this one for me certainly is up there amongst the best so one other thing to talk about of course is the bracelet so the bracelet on this is nothing short of amazing i mean i wish they made bracelets like this the level of detail in that is is sensational you've got blacked parts i don't know whether it's anodized or uh, the pdf coating uh, along with again it's not brushed finish i don't call that brush finish from my engineering background that is a sort of machined finish or a linish finish so it's very linear and it's been done with an abrasive um, uh, so it's fairly coarse and what was great about this bracelet is this isn't the one the watch came with the one the watch came with was pretty beaten up like the watch was but just through all my connections and posting in my facebook group link down below by the way um one guy a sort of friend of mine on the group uh, had the 5009 version but he didn't have the original bracelet for that and i just so happened to have a spare and we did a trade he says i've got a bracelet for your one and let's do a swap so we did and i still to this day think i came off better because i basically got a pretty much new old stock bracelet for this watch um, the clasp is also blacked or, or, or coated uh, which does run the risk of some scratches down there because the clasp is what you're always going to scratch when you're wearing it regularly so i do have to treat it a little bit carefully um, but there you go this is a beautiful watch uh, from all different angles um, and it's a great presence on the wrist and talking of wrists here it is on my seven inch wrist and look at that bracelet i think that's really really spectacular it is a little bit of a hair puller uh, the watch head is in lovely proportions as well you're looking at 36 millimeters across 41 millimeters lug to lug and its thickest point is 14.6 which i would say is almost perfect dimensions so let's see the world's first digital chronograph in action you push the little crown at the side into chronograph mode and then there we go you've got a split seconds running at the top uh, we have a lap button as well which works perfectly well and then of course we can stop and reset the chronograph so just a basic stopwatch but in its day that was the first of its kind and cutting edge technology as well and of course there we go we've got the classic digital light brilliant stuff excellent and there we go that's how i've managed to restore this watch how it came into my possession and i hope i've whetted your appetite into the world of digital vintage watches i think this holds a great place in my collection maybe in other people's granted this particular model is quite sought after i've seen them go for as much as 500 pounds for a really good one but those other models that i showed earlier in the video you can pick them up a lot less and they still have as much presence and i think they're really cool pieces to have uh, i've got plenty more digital watches uh, that i'm going to bring to this channel at some point and show you all of those uh, because i did have quite a long period of collecting them so i hope you really have enjoyed this video and of course if you have hit the like button that's all i'm ever going to ask it's really important more people like the video because then it's shown to more people as well leave your comments below i will answer literally everyone that i possibly can and um, join my facebook group retro vintage watches and restorations the link is below and 
I will see you in the next video. I've got, I think, another Seiko coming to the channel.